Um, hello, everyone. Um, thank you to be there with us for this maybe 12. It's the number 12 uh, Ukraine meeting, and it's our third and last meeting with um, Nadia Bernard Kovalchuk, uh, who made us the pleasure to have already two talks with us and who is going to present us today. Uh, the two projects she's running, no, she's running one of the projects, and the other one is at the, at the Institut Culturel d'Ukraine à Paris, an exhibition which is called The, the Undomy Table uh, that you can't, can't tame with contemporary photography, photojournalists from Ukraine on the conflict. And uh, her project, the library, uh, with books in French, English, and uh, visual, um, vis vis and photography to get a better understanding of uh, Ukraine identity and the situation. Thanks a lot, Nadia, and please start whenever you want. Uh, hello, everyone who's listened to us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Karina and Boris, uh, for inviting me and uh, for giving me the floor uh, today to, to speak about this project. Um, so uh, I'm sharing my screen uh, where you can see the um, uh, front uh, wall of uh, the facade of um, Ukrainian set center um, in, uh, in Paris. Um, so I think it would be interesting to, to start uh, with the, an explication uh, um, why uh, did um, um, why did we start uh, a project um, a longer a long um, a long project to to talk about Ukrainian art, culture, and history, and to, what is um, 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 what is the aim of this of this project, and um, what is uh, what is the response uh, for for which danger um, we trying to to give um, an answer. Um, so uh, you know, in the context of um, Russian, Russian invasion of Ukraine, um, there is um, also a great part of, um, of Russian propaganda and lie, lies that, um, that talk about Ukrainian history and Ukrainian culture. And um, this propaganda and uh, these uh, lies are also um, transmitted by um, Set of historical uh, writings by President of Russian Federation of uh, Vladimir Putin, who uh, wrote uh, uh, last year several historical uh, texts about the proximity of Ukrainian and Russian nations, basing on um, the writings of um, Russian neo fascist historian Alexander Dugin who was uh, uh, during uh, a long period of time a professor of sociology in the State University of Russia in Moscow. So it's quite um, a person with very extremist views, but who still has a real authority uh, in, uh, in Russia. And uh, Putin in uh, his writings um, reaffirm and uh, rewrites in the same narrative, the same ideas that uh, Dugin put uh, in his um, in his text. So I put here a station of uh, Dugin um, of his pu publication uh, made uh, via the social uh, network of contacts is Russian social network they, that is uh, um, the same thing like a Facebook but for Russian speaking uh, people. Uh, you can still find this citation and uh, you see the uh, um, this this phrase was written by him in the the day before um, the Donbass resistance of Ukrainian army in uh, 2014, um, where he um, considers that the people resisting, in fact, of Russian invasion uh, are cretins and uh, they need to be uh, all to be killed. Um, Can I ask you something before? Can we come back to the slide? Sure. Thanks. Yes. I, was, I just wanted to be sure it's just a translation. 
because translation problem because when you re we read the sentence ukrainians are wonderful slavic people does it mean that ukrainians are slavic people or that there are the bastards race emerge from the sewers like in the sen sentence after that no um he says that he don't believe that that uh, the, um, that the people who the, the army who resist uh they are ukrainians because okay he knows Ukrainians as wonderful Slavic people who won't resist to the great hug of uh, brother Russian. <laughs> so, uh, and he says that, no, these people who resist us aren't Ukrainians. That is kind of uh, nerds, kind of uh, bastards that uh, emerge from, from nowhere. And uh, this kind of, 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 of person must be eradicated. Okay, I understand better. So the good Ukrainians are those who don't good resist, Ukrainian. and the others are just not Ukrainians. Yeah, okay. and uh, um, to go further, um, not only uh, Ukrainian Ukrainians are brothers with Russian people. Um, only a day before uh, the the Russian invasion, uh, Putin um, proclaimed that in fact. Uh, Ukraine was invented, created by, by Lenin. That is a, a total lie, uh, <laughs> of course. And, uh, um, and this phrase um, was uh, an object of a lot of uh, memes and jokes uh, uh, the, day, uh, the day of its publication. Because, of course, Ukraine have a great history. And, of course, uh, <laughs> um, it wasn't invented by uh, by Lenin, but when I started to give some interviews to to speak about Ukrainian culture in France, um, that I I do a lot from the from the beginning of the war, um, I understood uh, that there is a great lack of comprehension, of understanding, and of knowledge from uh, French journalists, but also. Um, scholars and historians and uh, politologues, even from politolog, um, about Ukraine. They, uh, I, I remember I had this conversation uh, for um, the journal La Vie uh, Life, uh, when the journalist asked me, so what is the difference between Ukrainians and Russians? And you know, me who was born in an independent Ukraine, who uh, during, during all my life, I studied Ukrainian history, Ukrainian literature, Ukra uh, history of Ukrainian art. It's, uh, it was a really shocking question, you know, because uh, for me, there is uh, no question what is the difference between us because I'm so, uh, I'm so sure to be to have my own culture that is not Russian, that is not Polish, that is not uh, Belarusian, but is Ukrainian. That it was um, it was shocking and uh, from the first sight difficult to answer. Um, so uh, I needed to find some some points uh, uh, of of uh, of uh, real difference to like. Uh, uh, we have this uh, architectural style that is called uh, Cossack Baroque, or uh, we have the Ukrainian literature that uh, uh, you can find. Uh, you can find uh, the examples of which uh, starting uh, from 17th century. Um, so it wasn't uh, evident to 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 make a response to this answer, but uh, I was. I was surprised by the ignorance of uh, of Western. Uh, um, of Western can, can, I, can I weigh in uh, right now on that? Because that ignorance and that surprising, I think we are all facing that from mm -hmm. the moment right now. Uh, but it's also facing the power of the um, imperialism because yeah. U Ukraine and other countries suffered from that. Yes, yeah, sure. From, rap from rapacity. And, and, and you don't. We don't know that some people are Ukrainian because they have been Russians for the for yeah. politically Russians. They had no choice. 
So this ignorance, in my opinion, there are at least two explanations. Uh, this dominance of imperialist discourse of Russia uh, from many centuries, from, uh, from um, historians that worked in Russia, but also historians, Russian historians who worked um, uh, in Western um, institutions and who perpetuated the same schemas and the same narrative about great Russia and, uh, and brother nations and all these things and about Malevich Russian <laughs> uh, artists. I mean, all this cliche uh, we are fighting with today. And uh, from another side, uh, there was also an obvious lack from our side, from Ukrainian side, the lack of um, uh, of work on on this uh, on this subject, the lack of uh, diplomatic work, um, the lack of uh, cultural diplomacy. So there is uh, work uh, to do from our side. And um, it's a pity that we must that we started to uh, to work with this in in this circumstance. But but still, the, uh, I hope that um, this these circumstances so so tragic uh, that um, uh, that g gave us the possibility to uh, to speak. I hope that we will use it. Um, that uh, we we, um, we will use it uh, um, effectively to um, to put the attention of on our history and our culture and uh, on our history of uh, of, of art and, uh, and whatever um, so i see it like a possibility that we must seize and that we must use uh, very effectively and uh, I'm not uh, the only one person. There are a, gr a group of person in Paris, in fact, who understood this possibility and this urgence, urgency to speak about, to explain why Ukraine wasn't created by Lenin and what is, in fact, the history of Ukraine and what is modern Ukraine, because uh, anybody, uh, nobody knows as well about uh, history of Ukraine, but also neither about the uh, contemporary Ukraine. Um, so the war gave us this possibility. And um, from the beginning, there is a great interest uh, from the media that uh, gave us the floor and gave us the visibility. And uh, there are a lot of um, publications and magazines uh, that uh, put a light on the situation and on Ukraine. Uh, there are several articles um, and publications that speaks not only that speak not only about contemporary the actual uh, situation, but that try to explain the history and uh, so describe uh, the context. But um, we know from our experience of Maidan, for instance, or from the experience of Donbass, especially from the experience of Donbass, that this attention will not long uh, forever. And uh, this, that attention of media um, is short and uh, it, will, it will stop one day and that uh, other subjects like presidential election in France will, um, uh, will, will have um, uh, more, um, more visibility uh, through the medium. So uh, a group of, of people um, who are professionals um, in arts and culture in Ukraine, uh, several um, moved from from Kyiv because of bombing and because of war, and they uh, live uh, for for a moment. So they live for a moment in Paris. They decided to um, to form um, um, a new a new group of. Uh, of uh, of person who will, who would invest the uh, building of the um, cultural center of Ukraine with a kind of festival or program that uh, talk that speak about Ukraine 
uh, in different way through the series of exhibitions, through the series of um, um, uh, of uh, talks about literature and politics through uh, concerts and uh, for me uh, through this library that uh, I initiated. Um, so of course the very um, important event of this program that uh, is called um, Ukrainian Spring is uh, this exhibition uh, called uh, the Indomitable um, that is hosted by this building uh, in Paris, the cultural center of Ukraine. And that was uh, curated by Sulmia Savchuk, who is um, the curator in regular time, in peaceful time. Uh, he's a curator of um, Mestetsky Arsenal Center, the very great exhibition center uh, in Kyiv who can be compared with the Palais de Tokyo or Grand Palais because it doesn't have its, its uh, own collection but is used uh, mostly like a platform for a big collective uh, exhibition because it, um, the, the, the center itself, it's um, the ancient arsenal, so it's really huge building um that is one, one of the most important uh, institutions of uh, of art in ukraine in fact so uh Sulemia Savchuk um created this exhibition um that um unites unites um photographers and photojournalists who speaks uh, who speak uh mostly about um about the war, about the actual situation in Ukraine. Um, but it starts with a project of uh, video art, of, um, um, video made by a Ukrainian artist uh, from Lviv, Andrei Boyarov. Um, the video who, um, who shows these interferences uh, in the television, in fact, uh, from the culture channel um, of Russian television, where this interferation, you know, this kind of, uh, how can we, how can we? <laughs> glitches. <laughs> like glitches, this kind of, of, of glitches that um, appear in the middle of program about culture, you know, that speaks about uh, this interferation of politics and instrumentalization of culture by politics. So uh, there are a um, more large uh, frame of, uh, of themes she, she speaks about. But mostly um, the exhibition uh, show the works of very recent uh, images made by Ukrainian uh, photojournalists. Um, the, the exhibition is built uh, um, in two parts. It, com it, uh, it consists of two parts. First of all, this um, images um, made by uh, made by photojournalists. Some of them um, became really like iconic uh, um, photos. I don't know whether you saw them, but uh, I saw several times, for instance, this picture. Uh, I think um, it really um, has a kind of uh, I iconic uh, effect because uh, we recognized personally. I recognized this picture. I saw it several times, and I think it was important to put some famous picture um, in the exhibition. For instance, this one um, was taken in the Ushorod railway station. Ushorod is a city is um, uh, in western Ukraine, where people. Um, from from where people le uh, left from Ukraine to uh, to U U European countries, 
I, and you can see a, a lot of people in this uh, man who has listened to, um, to, to President Zelensky, who uh, from the beginning of the war uh, make this uh, speeches every day, <laughs> every, every, every evening, in fact, um, making a kind of uh, digest of what happened <laughs> and what he did. Uh, and um, the fact of um, of listening, Zelensky is um, became kind of rit ritual of, of Ukrainians uh, in Ukraine, but also abroad. Um, and um, so, so this image um, shows a kind of this kind of ritual and kind of new reality <laughs> of of, Ukraine, of Ukrainians uh, from the beginning of the war. Um, this one, I also consider that um, it is quite popular. I saw it also several times. Um, that show, show the, the pictures that show the man uh, trying to uh, escape Kyiv uh, with uh, his uh, cat and uh, and fish. It's uh, in the same time, you know, he has this cask, so it's you you understand the the danger, but you have also this uh, attention to his uh, the, his pets. Uh, so it's in the same time very sensitive, and you understand the, the whole um, the dangerous situation. And then um, I also think maybe you're not agree with me. Just tell me tell me whether you saw this uh, this picture because I think uh, what Salamia tried tried to do is to put in the same time. Um, recognizable pictures and uh, something something new that you didn't uh, see in a, uh, in printed medium. For instance, um, this one made by Olga Drozd uh, make part from a larger series uh, that she made every day. In fact, it is a view from uh, uh, her um, apartment. Um, she she makes every day the same. Uh, in the same time, she makes uh, a photo, photos um, that um, create this understanding of time that is passing, with uh, images that uh, that are um, uh, that becomes the more and more um, important of quantity. I don't know. Uh, so there are uh, the, the more and more images in the series. And um, what you can see also is this kind of dialogue of the of windows protected from uh, um, from bombarding. And uh, you see here we try to to put also the same um, protection. Do you, do, do you see what I mean? The, here, here is a kind of dialogue between the photos and between the, the windows of the center. Uh, so um, that was uh, that were um, several photos from the exhibitions um, that show that shows um, the most recent photos of uh, today's war, ongoing war. In the same time, what uh, the creator um, made is um, that she put also several, just only two pictures of uh, Maxim Donjuk, who were made in uh, 2017 in Donbass, and uh, which show in fact that uh, the war that is ongoing uh, didn't uh, start on 21st February, and that in fact it is a long war. Um, it is a eight year, yeah, eight, year, eight years war, um, eight years long war. And um, this um, diptych of, uh, of Don Duke from, from Donbass is like, uh, uh, I try to, to, to remember about this fact. And uh, it also serves in kind of transition between the first part which is quite colorful. There is a lot of colors in these images. And the second part um, that um, consists 
um, exclusively from works of uh, Alexander Gladiol, Ukrainian um, photographers, uh, photojournalists, who, uh, um, uh, in fact, is one of the most important photojournalists of Ukraine. Uh, he received the um, um, Shevchenko Prize in uh, 2020. Shevchenko Prize, it's a kind of uh, uh, Chevalier de Légion d'Honneur in Ukraine. So it's uh, um, as a distinction uh, for, uh, uh, for, for, for the very important work, for a lifelong uh, work, in fact. Gladilov um, works uh, with a lot of international agencies and he's a photographer for uh, Médecins Sans Frontières depuis, uh, um, uh, from, <laughs> uh, during um, uh, several years. He covered uh, many wars in High Karabakh, in Chechnya, in Moldova, and uh, he covered a war in Ukraine from uh, 2014. Um, uh, he works exclusively with monochrome photography so that he makes these images more universal and not on the, uh, that uh, talk about some, some universal human experience and not only about the situation in a precise moment. And uh, um, he started to work with these difficult um, themes like um, children without houses, uh, homeless children who um, in Ukraine and in, so in, uh, and, uh, in Soviet Ukraine and in independent Ukraine. He uh, photographed um, prisoners in uh, prisons in, um, at uh, post-Soviet space in Russia for instance, and he photographed a lot of um, um, conflict in conflict zones. Um, so how, how I said you, um, I, I think it would be really great if uh, Alexander Gladielov could uh, uh, take, uh, could speak during these talks uh, on your channel because he has a lot of things to say about his experience of, um, of covering other words, maybe I would like to to I would like to ask him what is the difference between covering this war and the other war uh, because he can compare he can, he can make this comparison. Hey, Nadia, and, we told you it's whenever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here was my small talk about about exhibition. And um, I would like to add that <laughs> in the same time, I opened in the first floor of the center, um, the library that in fact is my project, but uh, my colleagues um, helped help me a lot to, to make it possible. Um, I understood when I, when I spoke to journalists, I understood that in fact, um, often people don't even know where to look for information about Ukraine. And um, I saw there are a lot of libraries who tried to put and to exhibit some books from their collections to speak about Ukraine. And uh, most of the time, there was so few of these books. <laughs> and uh, I understood that uh, this uh, selection in, in libraries uh, they didn't really um, don't don't really form the panoramic vision, uh, neither of Ukrainian history, neither of uh, contemporary Ukraine, neither they um, answer can answer the question what is going on today and why is it going on. So um, I put together in the same time books in French in or English because my audience is uh, um, is, uh, is uh, are French and uh, uh, international visitors of, uh, of the center. Um, I 
I put together books uh, that talk about Ukrainian history, his, uh, the art history, culture, um, geography, uh, literature, classical literature, but, but also contemporary literature, and um, essays that um, speak about uh, actual political uh, situation. So in the same time, there are several um, publishing houses, uh, French publishing houses, who um, made a donation of uh, their books for this library and uh, who were extremely um, engaging, engaged and uh, extremely uh, um, reactive to my uh, um, uh, to my, my inquiry. For instance, um, this is a very important donation of uh, uh, several dozens of book of books made by L'Armatan uh, Publishing House, who has um, a series named uh, Ukrainian Presence, and where you can find uh, um, essays on history and on literature. And to, um, traduction, traduction, uh, translation, translations of Ukrainian of Ukrainian uh, literature, but also facsimile of um, of some uh, essays uh, that that were written in 17th or 18th century, and that is impossible to find uh, anywhere else uh, from. Um, foreign uh, travelers and uh, who wrote on Ukraine, about Ukraine, uh, and uh, that you can you can read uh, in these publications. I have also, of course, I, I put uh, my own books from my own collections. Um, so you have a lot of books about uh, Kharkiv School of Photography <laughs> that is well presented and um, um, there are also several um, private people who gave um, their own books so that I, I can put it um, for, for visitors of, of the center. Uh, so from one side you have new books um, from Gallimard or from Armatan or from uh, Bleu Jaune Edition. Uh, there are several uh, publishing houses. The, the new books that you can still order and the idea primarily was to show, uh, to show publications that exist, in fact, that maybe you can order uh, for yourself uh, via libraries. There are also libraries who, um, who who gave us uh, several photo books, um, for instance, the, the Delpire and Co. Library. They uh, gave us this, um, the uh, photo book of Chekminov of Passport, you see. Um, and also, here is also a new book about Babi Yar. They also gave us uh, so I'm I'm so glad <laughs> that they, they were so uh, engaged and that we respond to to, to this demand. Uh, and from the other side, I I have several books from um, private person. Um, and this book uh, frequently they are no longer available to, available to order. Um, that are old books and vintage books um, made a uh, dozen years ago. And for instance, uh, several days ago, I received two books, um, a catalog and writings of Alexander Bohomazo, who is a Ukrainian Kobo futurist artist, uh, books that uh, were made uh, in the 1990s. And uh, books arrived from Australia, and you can't uh, you can't find them uh, anywhere else at in this library. So uh, <laughs> we have some some a 
exclusive materials, if I can say so. Not only something uh, you can uh, uh, easily found in FNAC or I don't know what uh, in, any, in any library, but some exclusive things that uh, make this library more precious, I think. <laughs> for I, I have a question about all these uh, books. Is there a list somewhere? A list? A list of all the books you have. Uh, I'm making a list, yes. You're making a list? I'm making a list, yes. <laughs> it's going to be available on the Cultural Center webpage, I assume. A list of books? I um, I didn't think about it. In fact, it was a list for me, uh, just to make, uh, uh, to understand what I have and uh, to, and also to understand uh, which book um, was given and which book was, uh, uh, like even not to forever, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Landed. Um, Prete is to land, right? Land. Yeah. Land. Which book was land? So uh, I will need to give it back. <laughs> okay. So it, it is my private list, uh, but if, I I don't I didn't even think that it would be interesting for people to have the list. Uh, maybe maybe you're right. Uh, uh, it's it's a question because I I know from the beginning that a lot of people want to know more or want to do things and they don't really know how and, and, and who to, to ask to. So if there's a list of books on Ukraine available at the Ukrainian center and that you validate it, I, I think it's very uh, reassuring for some people who want to know more. And even if they don't come and, and check the books because they may not live in Paris, at least they have, they have a list. <laughs> <laughs> with, with the book that properly talk about the country and the identity. Yeah, yes, Come yes, in. I see, I see what you mean. Well, I have another list. I have a list of books that we would like to have, but that we don't have still. And uh, I, I, <laughs> so I, I use this uh, this moment to say that if you want to have the Ukrainian library in Paris, you can order some of this book. <laughs> Just contact me, and I will. I will send you a list of, of, of um, publication uh, that we would like to have. Mm. Um, it is a possibility to, to help. Yeah, maybe there's a, a photographer in Paris that would like to take a picture of all of those books. So you have a PDF yeah, where all of those books are visible. And maybe there is somebody who has time who would like to research if those books can be bought online. Um, there are issues of, um, I, I don't think that this, that you can legally uh, make the things that you can legally put uh, the books online. Uh, no, no, that you can buy them online. Ah, that you can buy them online. Of yes. course, of, uh, not every of this book, but uh, a, a great number of this book you can buy uh, online. That's why uh, I put here, an information about uh, this series uh, with a QR code uh, so so that uh, people can easily find it uh, in the internet um, mm -hmm. on the site of the publisher house. Um, I have a question regarding the exhibition. Um, the opening was Tuesday. Yes. Um, how was the opening? Was how, Who did visit? Was it the majority of Ukrainian experts, whether French people, press? Um, the opening was very um, reassuring, very successful. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a lot of people. You, you, uh, you weren't able to enter to the main room, this one. Uh, it, it is the beginning. Uh, it's not. It's not the opening. It's like a, a one hour before opening, when uh, uh, in the in the in the in the very moment of the of the opening, you you weren't able to enter to this room. So much there was people, um, and half of uh, of them were Ukrainians, because there are a lot of Ukrainians now in Paris, <laughs> and other parts um, were French. And there was uh, a lot of a lot of journalists as well. So it was a real success, like the first of our e event. Because uh, the exhibition isn't the first event; in fact, the first 
was the meeting with a Ukrainian writer, Andriy Kurkov, that is very uh, famous in France. I don't know whether he's famous in... in... I don't know him, but I'm not into... I, I don't read a lot of literature since I'm graduated from literature. Um, well, believe me, um, the same thing. The room uh, was, uh, was full of people. There wasn't even one empty uh, chair. And uh, there were a lot of people standing without chairs. Um, so frankly speaking, the group of uh, communicators and the group of, uh, um, of organizers, they really uh, did great their job about um, speaking around about these events. And I, I'm, I must re insist that um, the choice of events, the choice of artists or uh, writers or, or even books uh, it is a really a selection of the best we have because it's really important to form this vision of Ukraine. Uh, there is an empty space that we must fill with the best that we have, uh, the best writers, uh, the most um, professional historians, uh, um, the, the most visible artists, the best photographers. Um, so the selection of events is really, is made by, by, by professionals in every domain of, uh, of culture. And um, that's why there is a, that's why they are successful also, because uh, um the content of this event is of a great quality and uh, the library you see here uh, uh it's not everything that i have i have much more books than that but i made the really a selection a subjective selection of uh, what which um, of books that from my opinion form this vision of ukraine with great history but also of Ukraine that is a modern country um, with this uh, aspiration to democracy and uh, to uh, um, so you see we speak about the selection not everything we have <laughs> and I think it's it's uh, important to to make the selection by professionals how long is uh, the exhibition going to run um, it uh, finishes on uh, 10 May. Mm -hmm. so. And I also have a question. Uh, Solomia Sovchuk, the, the curator, he's going to stay in France? I, I think uh, for, uh, um, we, we don't know, <laughs> but uh, she's deplaced, like we say, deplaced in, uh, in France. So as long as uh, it's not, uh, it's not safe, to come back to Kyiv, uh, she stays in Paris. Okay. And uh, the exhibition is visible and open every day from 11 a.m. to um, 7 p.m. So, and the library is open as well during these hours. There are tables and chairs. <laughs> you can go, you can come with your computer and work with these books. Um, if you can send me a direct link, I will put it uh, on the web page with the loading. Thank you very much. For, uh, I'll do this. Um, and do I have questions? Do we have more questions, Boris? Um, no. I, I don't. I'm trying to. I think one question would be uh, if you say that the Ukrainian Cultural Center is so active and this is running until May, what is planned after? Um, so we have a plan for uh, next month. Uh, I can um, send you as well um, the program. Mm -hmm. uh, Ambassad. How I said, um, there are in the same time 
um, meetings with writers, exhibitions. There, there is already next exhibition that is programmed, uh, which will be um, the personal, personal exhibition of uh, Alexei Sai, uh, the, the Ukrainian artist Alexei Sai, that uh, opens uh, 10 May. So it's 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 a bit weird. They they plan to uh, to close one exhibition and to open the other in the same day. I think that there will be a readjustment uh, in the in the program, but it will open uh, in the beginning of the May. Mm -hmm. um, there are several concerts, and um, there will be also a meeting um, in the in the frame of a festival of book, of, of uh, the French festival of book, uh, Festival du Livre. Um, the meeting with uh, um, um, Sol uh, Sofia Androkhovich, which is one of the most prominent Ukrainian authors uh, nowadays. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm very glad and I'm very surprised, in fact, that uh, finally we have uh, the person of uh, of this uh, um, of this importance in that uh, participate in the program of uh, Ukrainian Center. Because I must say that before it wasn't very active. Uh, it wasn't very active because there there was only one person who worked <laughs> in this center. It is impossible to make anything that, that when there is only one person um, but with the with the groups of volunteers and a group of professionals uh, i see that the program is uh, truly of a great quality and um, people who take part in these events uh, really represent the very best of contemporary ukrainian culture I have a very last question. Is it is this happening only in the cultural center of Paris, or is it the same flourishing and, and super active uh, moment in every cultural center in Europe and the world? Uh, you mean uh, whether the, there are uh, other cultural centers, Ukrainian cultural centers, uh, anywhere uh, in, the, Be, in the world? Being that active, suddenly. So, um, I'm, uh, I don't know whether there is some another cultural center that uh, received uh, so important professionals uh, uh, to like to support their activities because this is a human factor that was this decisive in the case of uh, of this institution. But uh, there is um, an Ukrainian Institute of uh, London. Uh, that is very active um, for, uh, for, for, for several years. Um, it is one of the examples, I think, uh, for other cultural centers. Uh, they invite uh, very prominent scholars and prominent artists. And, uh, but it wasn't, um, it's, uh, how to say it? Um, it its activity is not um, supported by by the case of the of the war. It was uh, already active a year ago, so maybe um, the case of a Parisian cultural center of Ukraine is um, in some uh, extension uh, extraordinary and uh, unique for 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 this moment. Any, anyway, maybe uh, we will see other initiatives uh, that will flourish in days and a week, uh, next days and week. But for, for instance, uh, I see that uh, um, Ukrainian center in Paris um, truly became as, um, a kind of, of exception. <laughs> um, and I hope that it will last because that is one of the main objective of this program and uh, of this group of volunteers to keep speaking about Ukraine. Mm -mm. 
Well, thanks. I think we, <laughs> we, we had a big overview and I, I really hope uh, a lot of more people will keep speaking about Ukraine and Ukraine fight for identity. Um, thank you so much, Nadia. Thank you very much, Karine and, and Boris. One more time. Uh, yeah. It was lovely to have you and it was so interesting to follow all the topics you, you talked about and thank you so much. And thanks also for your help for maybe contacting others because it's it's so useful and we are, we're trying to help the, the way we can and to learn ourselves and help help the others to learn too mm -hmm. because it's a great teaching moment, very painful for a lot of, of, of you, but very, very important for all of us. Um, so thanks. Thank you. I will I will make everything I can to support uh, um, uh, support this, something. Um, I'm sure that you make a great job. You froze. <laughs> yes, now in the last minute she froze. <laughs> no, um, that's okay. Now she's not froze anymore, but it's easy over. Thanks. Well, thank you, Nadia. Okay? Thanks, everybody, for watching. Yeah. And well, there will be more talks. Just follow us on the channels you already know social media and their pages. Bye for today. Bye, everyone.